keep going. I'm, I'm really excited to see that choker that you're wearing. Do you know what? The struggle is real. I promised you, James, um, that I would bring my 90s choker game after seeing that you had posted a picture of Oasis. And um, the choker was real on Liam, right? Totally real. <laughs> totally real. And I, I have never seen it, actually. It was like one of those like new images. I'm, I'm a super fan. Um, so I feel like I've seen everything. So that was great. That was. I've never was... seen it either. And I'm a 90s kid. Now, James, yeah. just for those of us who've only just joined us, I want to yeah. reintroduce you. Yeah. We are very, very lucky to be joined today on the first episode of Live with Claire Press in collaboration with Elite by James Bamer, who is Global Artistic Director of Shiseido. Welcome, James, and thank you for making time to hang out with us. So where, are you, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm actually joining uh, from East Hampton, New York. Uh, I managed to escape Manhattan. I, I, like everyone, I've been um, isolated and in quarantine uh, for yeah. basically the past eight weeks, nine weeks, um, and I decided to escape the city and uh, get some nature, which has been incredible. Good on you. How, yeah. how has it been? Are you in Brooklyn? In, in where are you? Where do you live? Yeah, in the um, I live downtown in Lower Manhattan in Financial District. Um, oh right. So, it's interesting because like typically that neighborhood is pretty quiet. You know, it's really quiet after, um, after hours, it's quiet on the weekends. I mean, obviously with everything that's going on even more so, um, but it's, 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 it's an interesting time to say the least. For those of us um, who have joined who are outside of New York, obviously this is kind of a hotspot for coronavirus. Has it yeah. been stressful? How have you been, do have you been doing? It's, you know, I, th I feel like probably I speak for everyone that it comes and goes in waves. I think, I think we're all sort of acclimating to whatever this new normal is. Right. Um, so right. I, I feel like I have those moments where I feel totally fine, totally well adjusted. I'm like, you know, uh, adapted to this, to, to sort of the new day to day. And then every, you know, fourth or fifth day, I'll have like mad anxiety and won't be able to sleep and and all of that. So I think, I think like, you know, everyone all around the world, especially for people in New York City, uh, I think everyone's just sort of taking it day by day. Yeah, yeah, we're thinking of you. I mean, in Sydney, we have escaped the worst of it for now, but I mean, it's just been such a incredible moment around the world. I, before I ask you a serious question, I just need to know if Rosie is with you because I have been following your two pounds of sass <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> She's actually not with me. Um, I, She's I your share dog. Yeah, Rosie's my dog. She's my she's my very small um, two pound tea, teacup Yorkie. Um, but I actually um, share custody with her with my ex. So she's she's okay. in Brooklyn right now. Okay, good to know. Now um, I want to talk about changed perspectives, and I yeah. think that to speak with someone with your background because of I guess your perspective is what you do. How do you think that? this moment in time has changed our perspective. And I mean that in a bigger picture sense, you talked yeah. about, you know, that kind of yo-yoing of anxiety. There's obviously that this kind of digital connection that's happening, but how do you think that we're gonna change from this moment? I think what I have noticed probably more than anything is, is definitely there's a shift to the present um, versus really focusing on the, the near future. Um, to me, that's something that, that's actually sort of a Because we can't plan. Change. Say it again. Because we can't plan or it, our plans it, are thrown awry. Exactly. And I think for so many of us in, in the business, so many of us in fashion, so many of us in beauty, you know, our, our model is working quite far out in advance. And I think as, as we've all become aware, you know, it's, it's important to stay active and stay proactive in the present. And I think, mm. you know, from a, like a larger picture point of view, I think that's just helpful for all of us to keep in mind, um, sort of pay attention to the small things find beauty in the ordinary and in like the everyday ritual because those are really the things that I think help get us through. Oh my god I love that actually I'm seeing a kind of resurgence in mindfulness like you get excited when you hear the birds instead yeah. of the sirens or you know yes. yeah. what about the screen? I want to know about the screen because I feel like the new normal is this yeah. so I'm wearing pajamas underneath. No, but you know, I am you too. To I, I am too. And it's, you know, it's 6 p.m. here in New York. And I'm, I'm, I basically, I think one thing that's changed for all of us is we're probably like only dressing up on the top, right? And then like the bottom is sort of like, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, it's interesting though. I mean, I feel like the, the, you know, we've been leading up to this obviously with so much more engagement with, you know, um, FaceTime and, and obviously Instagram and Instagram lives. And I think everyone's, you know, really uh, taking part of the conversation. It's great because it's, 
you know, it's entertaining, it's inspiring, it's engaging. Um, and it's, it's it, more than anything, it's like something for all of us to tune into, um, which is good. Okay, but how can we win at the small uh, screen? So, so give us your <laughs> professional tips. I think, you know, I mean, one thing it's, you know, like anything, anytime you're, you're taking a picture or you're, you're capturing something, whether it is on your screen or it's, you know, on a camera or on, a, on, a, on film, it's all about light um, and really all about sort of angles. So I think the, the best thing that you, that we can do is, you know, wherever it is in your house, find the best lighting. Daylight is always the best if you have the option. So go to a window, um, you know, having overhead light is never a good thing. You always want light that sort of shines. <laughs> Cadaver shadows. It, exactly. And it's, it's funny as I think as everyone is, you know, doing more and more Zoom calls these days, it's, it's interesting because like, you know, so many of our, our homes and our apartments have overhead lighting and they're the worst. So if you can get light that's either from, um, you know, from the front or a good tip is you can light which side you prefer. Like I like this side of my face. Oh God, I need these tips. Mm -hmm. So, so I always sort of, you know, even in your chair, if you sort of like tilt a little bit more towards the side that you favor oh. and, and sort of find your light that, that really helps. The other thing that's really important, you know, cause most of us, especially when we're on zoom, we're on our laptop computer, which is typically under our face, which is really not flattering. So if you can put your computer up on a stack of books, if you can um, have the camera be as close to eye level or even a little bit higher, you'll always look better. Oh my goodness, I wish I had gotten these tips before we press record. <laughs> Did you read about Tom Ford? Tom Ford, yes. I don't know where he shared that, but he was like, you've got to put the white paper it's, underneath to, to d reflect up at you. Which is actually a really good <laughs> idea. Like, I mean, we do that all the time, especially do? when we're doing beauty photography. And um, you know, oftentimes what you don't see when we're shooting is there's like a, a bounce card underneath the model so that you get this really beautiful soft fill. And especially for us that are a little bit older or getting a little bit older, um, you know, light, if it's harsh, can make us look worse. So it's the, the, all of those little things are, are good little tips. Now, James, I was in a, a mad hot panic, actually, because I'm not good at this light stuff. I'm a podcaster. I like to be not even seen, just heard. Um, the screen is <laughs> killing me. And I was like, man, James is going to judge me. I don't know if I even dare go the red lip. I'm not a professional when it comes to makeup <laughs> application by any means. So share your top tips and what can we do? Obviously, if some of us are watching who don't have your professional expertise, we'd like to pick your brains. What are they? Yeah. I mean, one thing that I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I can tell you one of my personal uh, tips and trip, tricks, and I think it's a really good one is um, do your eyebrows. So add a little bit of color and definition to your eyebrows. Um, even if you don't normally do this, especially considering that light is so varied when it comes to an, you know, an IG live or a Zoom conference, you oftentimes lose the frame of your eye when you're mm. lit from the top. Now I'm also going gray, so my eyebrows are actually quite gray, so I always color them in, but um, an eyebrow pencil or an eyebrow powder is a really great trick. Um, also, um, try, you know, you don't have to do a lot of complexion makeup, but I do, I do find that, again, most people get really shiny in the center of their face. And if you're lit from the front, that will be more exaggerated. Like I'm actually seeing that I probably need to add a little bit of powder here, but that just makes the, um, a little bit of powder on the, on the complexion, making yourself more matte than normal will actually diffuse light and make you look a little bit, I think, more even. Gives a little bit of a filter, um, even if you don't have a But there is on. a filter on Zoom. I've learned that. You can actually what, have the fake filter. <laughs> that, was, that, is a, that is a heaven, uh, that's a gift from heaven, really, especially when you have calls in the morning. It just gives you a little bit of a blur, um, which is great. Um, and then you were mentioning red lipstick. I think, you know, especially if, you know, if you're in a conference situation, you're conducting business, you're talking to somebody, I think red lipstick or a colorful lipstick is one of the easiest ways to make somebody sort of pay attention. Um, so if you really have something to say or you want your point to be heard, I would say maybe put on a bolder lip uh, than what you normally do. Okay, I could have done it. <laughs> yeah, you could have done it. Totally could have done it. It's so easy. I was warned to bring my makeup bag and I was like, I'm not doing that. That's not something that I'm willing to reveal. But I thought you were going to walk me through the tips. Well, you know, I mean, if you have your makeup hand, if you, make, if you have your makeup uh, bag ready, we could probably just fish and see what's in there and figure out how to make it work. Oh, this will be fun. This will be super fun. I was so reticent to do this because this is really <laughs> not my bag. So I've been a journalist for 20 years. I mean, 10 years. 
because I'm so young and I can't even remember the 90s. But I've never written about beauty. This is rookie territory for me. So I reveal that I have bright red lipstick, which we talked about. Okay, that's perfect. I have um, a shiny thing, which I like to just put on lips. Yep, which I think that's also great. I mean, I, I feel like probably for most of us, because we're spending more time indoors, um, you know, we might be a little bit more dehydrated than typical. So, mm -hmm. you know, even just like a clear sort of high shine balm mm -hmm. or gloss on the lip is great. A good little trick that you can actually do right now, Claire, to bring a little bit of light to your face, take a little bit of that moisturizer and just put a little bit on your, the, um, do the, the balmy one. This guy? Yes, let's do that mm -hmm. one. Take a tiny bit, take a tiny bit out on your fourth fingers and just pat it together right mm -hmm. here. Okay, and mm -hmm. then take a little bit and put it right on the center of your eyelids. Oh, really? We're doing yep. this? <laughs> yep. So you just mimic what I'm doing, right? I'm actually not doing it. But what that's a, this is an old Hollywood trick actually to get Ooh. light up to the eyes. So it just catches a little bit of sheen. You can even put a little bit of that on the point of your cheekbone right here. It did it. it See worked. it? See? Oh my it's like, goodness. It's like an instant brightener. I'm feeling better already. All right, I'm getting off this topic. I want to talk <laughs> about the future of fashion. Um, yeah. I, I, you and I have shared a few stories around what's happening with shoots. And I'm sure that some of those joining us are models, are in the industry, are creatives. Yeah. Um, I've worked at Vogue for years and years um, and various other magazines. And what we're seeing is a complete pivot because shoots can't happen in the lockdowns. Yeah. Budgets are being cut, but there's yeah. also all this innovation happening with yep. photographers doing shoots through FaceTime. What's your take on where this might be headed? I think it's really interesting. I mean, obviously, um, you know, so much of my, so much of what I do and so much of my life is spent on set. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, in, at large, the industry really needs to consider and think about, um, you know, what we'll do not only to uphold sort of the safety guidelines and the social distancing as we go back to work, but it's also like, to your point, what do we do after this? Like, how do we stay relevant? Uh, how do we stay present? And then also, how do we look to the future? I personally think there's, there's so many amazing, inspiring things that I've seen um, that have been coming out of this time. You know, to your point, like shoots that are conducted on FaceTime, shoots that are conducted on Zoom. Um, there was a friend of mine, Brianna Capozzi, a photographer, did this amazing um, shoot with Bella Hadid, all directed over FaceTime. It was really cool. So I do think there's something interesting about just the, the narrative and the, the context of how the stories might be told. Um, there is something to be said about, I think because we're all sort of in this right now together, mm -hmm. it's, it seems strange to go back to what we were doing before. So I'm personally really inspired by like how we can do things differently. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about this at, at Shiseido, which is how we will, um, you know, how we'll continue to tell the story that we always want to tell, but maybe how we'll change it and, and shift the lens a little bit. There is something interesting about, um, I, I think this is part of the natural evolution of like tutorial culture, right? It's easy for, for me to get wow. on FaceTime or onto um, like a Zoom with somebody and can walk them through how to do their makeup virtually. So I think hmm. there is something interesting about that. I think, you know, um, it's interesting, we're seeing this already with like, you know, a hairstylist sort of walking you through how to do a chignon, like a wardrobe stylist sort of t telling you how to put, like, put a look together. And, and obviously, you know, if you're doing content with models, models know their angles, models know how they like to show themselves. So that's something that they can do really well. I mean, we all, we're part of a selfie culture now, whether we want right. to admit it or not. So I think all of those things sort of, you know, in some way or form have sort of taken us to this point. And I do think it's interesting to sort of see what else we can do with it. It's kind of a brave new world, but one in which I think we do lose something too, because that personal connection, you and I can do this now. Yeah. Great. But once you add more, if you're looking in a Zoom context, it becomes kind of discombobulating. Yeah. You don't have that also physical touch, which I was thinking yeah. about. Um, there's an interesting story in the New York Times about how we're changing the ways in which we greet. And I thought, well, fashion yeah. people love to kiss, right? You go to the yeah. shows, you kiss, even if it's yeah. an air kiss. Totally. We're going to have to change. You shared a post about um, social distancing on Instagram the other day. Namaste. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You can do this. You, you know, I, I, I always do one of these. It's interesting because... I mean, as a makeup artist, that's something that is such a part of my um, communication, you know, and such a part of my job. I mean, I literally touch people and literally put makeup on. 
and and the touch is you know is definitely a part of the connection that you build with mm -hmm. somebody so so that part I desperately miss. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I, I miss hugging my friends. I miss, um, you know, just the, the active touch. It's, it's such a part of um, who I am. So I, I, I agree with you. I hope that we get back to that sooner than later. I mean, obviously safely, um, but I'm, I'm more than ready to get back to like, you know, actually yeah. touching. Yeah, I think one of the most interesting parts of this time has been the way that we're forced to look at what matters. So yeah. you say how powerful touch is and how it's part of the way we communicate and connect. Yeah. And those things become even more important when we can't do them, right? So I guess maybe we appreciate more from this moment. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I think that's, you know, what you were asking earlier about, like, what's, you know, what's the shift in perspective or what's something that's different? And I do think it does boil down to those little moments of connection, those little things that we do take for granted. Um, you know, in New York, I run into my friends all the time. I, I see them on, on the, on my, on a bike, I see them in my neighborhood, um, and it's it's such a such it's such a part of our daily experience that we take for granted. So I do hope, um, you know, on the other side of this, that we are maybe a little bit more tender and a little bit more grateful for for all of those mm. things. That's um, beautiful. I know I am. I love the word tender. We're running out of time, but I just want to finish on perhaps you might share a few more thoughts on how we can use this time to innovate because. For me, I'm delighted. I learned that just that, I look better. <laughs> I'm going to fix my angles. <laughs> what would you like to leave us with in terms of perhaps your industry and moving forwards? I think, you know, I mean, what, what I've always believed more than anything, um, I think especially when it comes to innovation um, and just in general, um, you know, you have to try things that you're, yeah. that you're afraid to try and you have to do things that are different. I mean, Anyone who knows me knows that I am not like a face forward person. Um, I'm definitely behind the scenes. All of this like Instagram live and like, um, it's a completely new thing for me. Yeah. And I'm just sort of embracing it because I feel like, you know, wherever there's a little bit of trepidation or fear or anxiety, there's also growth and uh, the potential to learn something. And I think that's, you know, a, a great opportunity. Um, so I just, that's, I guess that's, you know, maybe innovation comes from risk. Maybe innovation comes from the willing, the willingness to fail. And I think all of those yes. are just sort of good things to think about in general. James, you're my Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Fear just means you care, right? I love this. You know what? This innovative time has allowed me to connect with you on the other side of the world. And I'm absolutely delighted. Thank you for sharing been, your it's insights. Been, it's been a pleasure. Please send, uh, please send love from New York. Um, I know I have so many dear, great friends in, in Sydney and Australia. So I'm sending all of my love and all of my support to Australia as well. Thank you, James. And just share how we can follow Shiseido, you and Miss Crumbs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow um, Shiseido, which, which is the handle that I'm on right now. Um, my handle is James Aaron Bamer. And then my dog, if you want to follow, although the content is not refreshed that often, is Ms. Crumbs with two Zs. So um, check her out. Take up Yorkie. You heard it here. Thank you, James. Thank you so Enjoy much. Enjoy your day. Thank you, everyone, you for joining us. Thank you. Air kisses and namastes. That's right. Or one of these. <laughs> or the Take Vulcan care. salute. No. <laughs> Okay, everyone, please come back and join us next week. I'm going to be on your screens um, for as long as they'll have me <laughs> with more shine and better angles. <laughs>